Camp Kindleland was a Yiddish camp. It was a left-wing Yiddish camp. They didn't practice anything but Yiddishkeit. They, again, worked with teaching, dealing with you in Yiddish, having Yiddish plays, speaking Yiddish. They also spoke English. It wasn't only that uh, Jewish would be prominent. But, uh, and they celebrated Yiddishkeit. Camp Kindleland had a tremendous impact on me. Uh, I was there for uh, four years. Uh, after that first year, uh, they, it was for the summer, for the full summer. My folks came in uh, April of 46, so that summer of 46, summer of 47, and summer of 48, uh, spent my full summers there. Camp Kindland was, and as far as I understand, it remains to be a haven, a place to, uh, for the summer that was just absolutely wonderful. I spent 11 years there as a camper and as a counselor. This summer I am taking my vacation and working at camp for a week and that will make 15 consecutive summers. Wow. Yes, I've loved camp so much. You know, when I look back on it, I think it probably wasn't a great camp. When one thinks about camping as a place with sports and with nature, we were learning Yiddish. <laughs> we had Yiddish classes, that we had Yiddish plays. We had, I loved it. It was my salvation. It was a wonderful, warm place for me. We had Yiddish classes twice a week. I learned how to swim. I swam around Sylvan Lake, which is a big lake, was a big accomplishment at that time. We had choruses, we sang songs, I acted in plays. There was a movement to staff, put more people on staff that knew more Yiddish and knew more Yiddish culture, and that was part of, part of that. Some of the kids came from homes where the, 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 they, they heard Yiddish and some of the kids didn't. And it was always kind of a struggle to make it as, as much of the camp as the people who ran the camp wanted it to be. I mean, as a hub, the Bakenen met Yiddish dort in Kinderland. We after we netzmen the Aleph base in Yiddish. So Lenin ganz zatzen af Yiddish durch Alid. And so in Eisenweinig, the Kinderland him. This is for me a given, very netzig. But I have given out more, more to learn in Yiddish, in Yiddish sprach. We had a communal uh, kasse, as it was called, uh, that's a Russian word, in which kids uh, pooled their money together. We just put money in there. So on um, what was called free night, uh, we would go down to the camp store and uh, we each had whatever 25 cents to spend taken from the kasse. That was really a left-wing camp. Well, it was during the McCarthy era when I went. I remember on visiting day, <clears throat> we used to have police cars outside that would write down the license plates of the parents who were coming to visit. So I thought that the Yiddish linke culture is all in the Vergangene Zeit. To me, it's given the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. To me, it's given like the alte Mises from the Arbiters. Aber das ist wichtig, sich zu lernen und, und es ist euch nicht gewinnt, geht äh, kennen sich mit den Menschen von der heutigen jüdischen linke Welt. Pete Seeger came, he just lived down the road, so he came and spent two weeks with us. Uh, in no time I was singing, uh, you know, Irish songs like Kevin Barry, uh, Zognit Kemal and uh, Villa Bajan and, uh, you know, all these other songs. Uh, uh, politicized me even more than I had been. The staff of Kinderland Lakeland in the summer of 1947 revolted. The hundred or so staff members would take over the floor 
and the paying guests at Camp Lakeland, which was the adjacent adult camp, complained that there was no room for them to dance. So the ruling came down from higher authority that the staff is not to enter, participate in the folk dancing until after 10 p.m. So a staff committee was formed and 17-year-old me was the spokesman because I spoke Yiddish. Kindling by the 60s, it seemed that it was like Baba Zayda and not, not Tate Mama who, who spoke, you know, who's like, but, but they all knew Yiddish, that middle generation, but it wasn't their, their, their Mama Lushen and um, they really wanted to preserve it, but they had never really spoken Yiddish that much to their you know, to their own kids. or But they all sent them to Kindlin and to Kinderschul, you know, to various Kinderschuls. We didn't talk about Jewish holidays. The only time that we really talked about Jewish things was around Holocaust commemoration. But still, it wasn't specifically Jewish. We would talk about anybody who rose up and fought. We would talk about anybody um, who was a hero um, of, the, uh, of the Holocaust, I guess. Besides the Yiddish word of the day, there was very little that was specifically Jewish. And Camp, I think, worked hard to do that. That, like, there was this idea that if we're promoting diversity, then Camp should be diverse. And so, um, while it is a traditionally Jewish camp, it's definitely not a Jewish camp, um, or only Jewish camp, only for Jews. Kindleland I'm still involved with because if I wanted to be there for my grandchildren, you need to support it now. And if my grandfather hadn't been in a group that helped to found it, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been there. You know, it's, you know, if my parents hadn't been there in the, the really dark days when we were uh, trying to, you know, when it went from 600 kids after, before McCarthy, before the uh, 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 McCarthy witch, uh, witch hunts, to 90, 50, 70, 90 kids after the witch hunts, if they hadn't been involved and in, on the board and trying to push after, you know, in the years after that and keeping it alive somehow, it wouldn't have been there. So I do my part, you know, it's, it's you know, how, how, do you, how do you ensure continuity? How do you make these, these organizations continue and all, not only continue, but keep them meaningful and, and important to the world today. Kinder, 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 Kinder,